Images, which is Google's AMP initiative, um, probably four months old. They are queuing pages on their servers that um, immediately pop up on a smartphone. So it eliminates some of that lag time. All the people from Google were advocating, you know, building sites, sharing content, all in the AMP protocol, which is a coding, uh, HTML coding protocol. <clears throat> then A-B testing, um, you know, becoming the preferred method. So if you have a landing page for Disney, let's just continue with that example. One of them has a picture of a family and says, all-inclusive stay at the Hilton. And another one says, you know, free meals and free bus trips. You know, then you would test A against B and see which one is converting more successfully. And they're doing this for so many elements. One of the last, just before the last slide that I have is really um, breaking down the minutia in terms of how people are measuring conversion. And it really gets to the placement of a uh, seal of approval, the replacement of a buy button. I mean, all these things are being tested, proving efficient and in increasing conversion rates. So, anybody will pause for questions? Anybody? So, we talked a little bit about some of these. I think uh, everybody's marketing their business, has sales staff, engaging in social media. Again, this is more tied to uh, the servicing of the website and how you're going to get traffic there and how you're using the website. <clears throat> we talked uh, a lot about building a website, and if you're starting from scratch, you know, again, the best idea is to plan before you build. Um, have an idea of who you're trying to get to the website is you want to optimize for that particular visit, whether it's a donor, whether it's a potential traveler, whether it's a retiree looking to transition into their own business, um, somebody engaged in technology that has broken devices, uh, or a business concerned about sustainability. I mean, that's got to be your starting point. From, from point one, you need to be thinking about that person and the path that they're going to take to your website. Because, um, you know, again, it's a numbers game. So, if 300 people are visiting my site for one conversion and 200 of those people aren't my ideal customer, that number, that 300 number is going to get higher and higher and higher and you're not going to be efficient in your results. So again, planning, measuring, analyzing, and adjusting. So this uh, actual slide pulled from uh, another presentation I've done on building a website. <clears throat> you know, you want to create a statement of work create a site map, draw wireframes and mockups, and then uh, building. A lot of discussion is had when you're talking about building a website on design. And uh, I've never seen design close a deal. The design can help you convert deals. So you want to focus some time in that. Make sure it's uh, aesthetically pleasing, but also communicates the right uh, unique selling proposition. <clears throat> And then Jeff covered, you know, I'll have a few slides in there as well, about setting up web hosting, and uh, we talked about A-B testing. And just like opening a business when you launch a website, people come flooding in, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so there's going to be some promotion, um, constant changes and improvements, and then uh, search engine optimization and content management. Because, again, you, you don't want somebody to come to your site and then, you know, they decide they need to come back and revisit, and it's exactly the same. That's, you know, whether it's a new blog post, whether it's, uh, you know, new photos and images, you, you constantly want to be keeping it fresh with people. What is a typical time frame to go through those steps? <clears throat> so I tell all my clients it's a six-week minimum, and uh, I will tell you you never get done in six weeks. <laughs> Six weeks is if I give them something and you know within 24 hours I have it back on my desk to keep moving. But um, it's uh, you know let's you know I'm gonna get a couple engagements right now where we hit their busy season. So now the website fell off their, their project radar for another season. So it, it can be months. Uh, six weeks again if if somebody's motivated and, and ready to return the things at my desk that. Ultimately, there's things I can't move forward with. They're, you know, 
judgment calls, et cetera, pertaining to the business that I need feedback on it. Uh, six weeks would be an optimal schedule. So a lot of times it takes longer than that. Okay, so we were talking a little bit about building and we we're jumping a little bit back and forth, but you know, and we're gonna see a couple of sites at the end, just random service sites from around the area that I pulled up and we can kind of critique those and, and see how those are built. But when you're building for conversion, um, again, your ideal customers in mind, and you want to make sure that you're communicating to them what it is you do above the fold, right? Everybody knows the old newspaper term, above the fold, where newspaper gets served to you, and above the fold is kind of the cover page that you would see. So above the fold would be what people see on their device, whether it's a PC or a mobile phone. So maybe that's just a brief heading overall of what you do, whether it's uh, device repair or you know, travel consulting or I don't know, what would be the... I actually have to leave right now. Is there any way I could access this information? Sure. Did you sign the sheet? Yeah. I'll send the slides to everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Basically, when you say above fold, you mean without having to scroll. Yeah. So what you see on the website on your computer screen without scrolling at all. This is uh, ABC Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. So, you know, really big Chicago Land Area Service phone number. You see what they do, and again, this is on a PC. So, they have you know options and tabs for everything. If I hover those, those are quite voluminous, you know, multiple tabs. So, there's a ton of information on this site, right? And now let's translate that to mobile. And this is a good way to tell if your site's mobile responsive or not, you just downsize it. And this is what somebody would see on their smartphone. So it goes to this drop down tab. Again, you've got ABC and cooling, unique selling proposition, open 24 7, and then a, a list of their tasks. So as you scroll down, or let's click on the menu first. So, so what would above the fold be on there? I guess above that text, right? It's everything you see. Yeah. And you might want to explain the three horizontal bars in the upper right hand corner. Yeah, I was going to go the number or something. So that's uh, your menu, in essence. That's what has consolidated. That's responsive by nature. Your images, your menus, they're going to break down again. It doesn't stop them from being full of information. So you can just go to the area that you really want to. I didn't peruse these before, but yeah, these are all these two, but they get cut off. So, um, you know, maybe that's a strategic decision, maybe it's not. Maybe plumbing is their number one revenue generator, and then it goes there. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's just a design flaw, right, that they didn't account for. <coughs> But I am, I'm amazed sometimes at how many websites you go to that you have to search for the phone number. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. really? That's exasperating, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, and then you're like, where, where is it? And then it might be like way sure. down there and, Here's and contact us. Yeah, in a lot of restaurants, you can't see their hours of operation on the home page. You have to click on the About Us page, which doesn't make sense to me. It's the one thing you want people to know. Right, and then, you know, again, it's hard to say black and white. Maybe that's by design. Maybe they're looking to promote their open mic night. Maybe they're looking their specials ahead of hours, and you know, it, I, I would say that that's probably a strategic flaw. But chances are that anybody as smart as you is running a website. That's know. why it happened. So here's another uh, downside site. You see, even more importantly, call now. I mean, that's great to have that right there. Sometimes you can have your phone number across there, and, and on a smartphone you can just tap it, and it'll go to phone. So right. their menu as well, and then the icons that I'm assuming are links below that. But you start to see, like, websites aren't necessarily there to sell for you, right? They're there to legitimize, they're there to drive interest. Um, you know, bullet points can be more than enough for... Okay, I have a random question, yeah. if it's okay. Um, so I work from home. Yeah. How do you feel about, like, putting your address out there? Sure. So. Um, do you ever see yourself with an office? No, I don't. So I don't either. 
um, I'll, I won't have an office until I buy a building and either create a co-working space or lease it out. So um, most of the uh, contractors and, and part-timers I work with are operating out of their home as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't need an office, but I do share my address okay. um, for SEO purposes. So okay. I don't know if I'm currently on, and this geography might throw it off, but for a while I was the number one for local results when you typed marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I've optimized the site for digital marketing strategy um, tonight, so if I search that, I come up first. Um, but again, that's how you build the back end of your site. So SEO, again, is more than just the terms you use to build your site. It's things like uh, directory listings, um, name, address, and phone consistency. So it, yeah, it can be a big issue. It's <clears throat> people that, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to move in two years, but let's share my address. Well, every directory listing you put out there then has to be updated. So. I, didn't, I don't have a report, but uh, there can be hundreds of directory listings, thousands for businesses. You know, I guarantee uh, if I go on Allied Air Heat and pull a report for how many directory listings they have, them and their competitors in the industry have thousands. So they've been in business for 50 years, they're not going anywhere, right? right. So. <laughs> well, you get the maximum benefit from putting your address on. Yeah. Do you have to tag it at the, bait, the foot of every page, or can you just have it on a contact page? So. I was talking off-page directory listings, like a white pages, like uh, other directory But on your website, though, for SEO, do you have to tag it on every page, the bottom of every page? Usually, uh, putting it in the footer will handle that for you, okay. and then having a map on your Contact Us page is best practice. What's that? I don't want people to come to my... Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even want my clients to talk to him on the phone and put this guy. Kind of the resolution that I made was, you know, I was uh, doing a lot of calling for a client, a not for profit large event. And anytime I didn't have a phone number or email, I could Google it. And 70% yeah. you know, of them I would get. You know, some of them are not out there, some of them are uh, hidden. But um, if someone wants to find out where I live, they it's, okay. Yeah, I don't. The illusion of privacy in today's day and age is gone. Got it. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> but it wouldn't make it overly easy for them to find. Yeah, them. right. Particularly when I mean, you're right. a woman at home by right. yourself. Yeah. So, um, you know, in conversion. So, so we're all on the same page for what a conversion might be. A conversion could be a phone call. Conversion could be someone filling out your contact form. Conversion could be a, just a message sent to you uh, on an email or uh, any listed form of communication. So, what are what are some ways that you can do that? You know, by industry, you know, um, offer a free either a white paper, a case study, or offer a free evaluation. You know, contact me for a free evaluation. And there's pop-ups that you can do that kind of force people. Um, let's say you have an article about it. Somebody's clicked. Now they're on your page. They're reading an article. They scroll halfway down and a pop-up comes up for a free evaluation. Give us your email and we'll follow up within 24 hours. That would be a great way to drive conversion for your visit. For travel, the same thing. You know, interest in a trip for Disney, reading an article, pop-up comes up, we'll contact you. Yeah. Uh, and again, that's <clears throat> before the uh, phone tracking is installed in the live chat, where those are even more direct mechanisms for that. We did a, a sale email blast and I said, if you can name one of our seven partners around the world, you get 20% off on your... How'd that work so, for you? That's uh, pretty good. Only a few, but I, it was just kind of fun because I just threw it out there to see yeah. what would happen. Yeah. And I'd, be, I'd be pretty happy about only a few, right? You think yeah. about a direct mail campaign, you're talking about under 1% for a return rate. Right? Yeah. Um, it's you know, Just because you hear about things going viral all the time, you got to think about the audiences and you know, what your audience, well, how big was the mailer? Uh, it was e it was an email yeah. to like 400 people. Yeah, that's so great. we got like a 29 percent click rate. So good numbers, that's great. right? Yeah, yeah that's it, terrific. I was really yeah, that's pretty like 25 to 30 is standard for um, constituent lists, right? So people that have done business with you before. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. You should be proud of that. Thank right. you, sir. <laughs> I agree. For a rookie, it wasn't too bad. Now you're a or a chiropractor. Puts a, a secret word in his blog every week. Ah. And if you go and find it, you get 10% off. Ah. So my wife has two friends who don't really use computers, 
every week for calling her up. Give us the password. <laughs> Great, right? I mean, the goal is to have people talking about your business. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Test headlines, okay. So yeah, testing calls to action, uh, testing headlines, and then short forms. So you don't want to get somebody excited about contacting you and then have a contact form with 20 different submissions or you know eight questions with five drop downs each. It just um, how long yeah, would you so run a particular headline for a test time period? Um, I would say that would be dependent by the content of it. So uh, 30 days would probably be sufficient to get it. I mean, and again, if, if that's giving you a large enough sample based on your monthly traffic, so. You know. I, in order to understand what you're saying here, you have to kind of keep everything else the same. If you're changing well, too many sure. things on the page, and you don't know what program, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, so you don't want to change the body copy, the offer, and the headline right. all at the same time. Yeah. And you're tracking this on Google Analytics, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll go back to the site. So, yes. so look it up here. This should just be for ABC.com, right? Yeah. Right. So. I, I Google searched uh, Palatine heating cooling or you know hard to hide. So right about there, you're gonna see Google pay per click, branded account, ad source. As you're running these different campaigns, you can title them, and that's how they're tracked specifically. So as you get into analytics, they would have you know Google PPC would be a separate thing that they could track that just be the paid paid campaign. And then as that goes on. See how far that goes on. That's all PVC branded account, PVC branded different identifier. Yeah, so there's probably two or three separate snippets that they're tracking all based on the search terms because I clicked on paid ad as I did my search. That means that's a Google AdWords ad. So you know, like this, okay. I just typed in the address and this isn't tracking. Can I ask a basic question about Google Ads and search engines yeah. and all that? What are, are there some basic costs? I mean, what are the basic costs? What, are, what is that dependent on? So AdWords depends upon uh, the competition for the keyword. Okay. So a basic example would be um, a keyword that is $8 a click. So let's... Uh, like if we wanted to do resale shops. I mean, that would be very expensive. Yeah, I bet. Because I just Googled myself. So That's we specific were, enough. Yeah, we were in there, but we were like 10 down. So is everybody good with diverging? We're going to have more than enough time. Really. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, no. I, I want to cover. It's it's so hard to focus a presentation on specifics. There's so many variables tied to it. So this, I just typed in resale shops. This is a Google shop search. Here's an ad. Um, online resale shops. So that's probably their keyword. Jeff's right. That's probably a very expensive keyword. So if I were to click on that, that would cost them the $8, let's say. I don't know that for a fact, but we can find out the specific cost for that click. Now, um, there's other terms, maybe resale shops, Palatine, resale mm -hmm. shops, you know, geo-specific, mm -hmm. maybe less, maybe more. But now, so let's take $8 as our average cost per click. So if that presents, and I don't click on it, Good for you. You just got a free impression. That's what that's called. So uh, no cost for that. But um, just lost my thunder. <clears throat> so 30 days, eight dollars a click. You could get one click a day for two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Now that may not translate into eight dollars a day. Mm -hmm. It may be you go three days and you get two clicks. You go four days and you get another two clicks. So you can you know set your max daily budget, you can set your max monthly budget, you can shut off a camp, uh, set up a campaign shut off, where if I hit $300, it automatically shuts off. Um, so, so you, you set could, that up, excuse me, uh, so you set that up when you develop your Google yeah. page? Yeah, this that. would be a campaign on a specific product or service. Okay. And you would want to do that, because you can do resa online resale shops, and include in that campaign um, 
resale pants, resale shirts, resale appliances, etc. But then you couldn't really measure that. So you would want to break those into separate campaigns okay. so that you could see which one was performing the best and then funnel more budget to that specific campaign. Okay, thank you. But here's the challenge. Eight dollars a click. Yeah. Let's say you only get one customer for a hundred clicks. Right. That means it's eight hundred dollars to get a customer. Yeah. Can you does your profit margin allow that? Right. Exactly. That's what you really have. Most cases, most businesses cannot afford to buy a term that's more than a dollar a click because they don't have the profit margin. Correct, I can see that. Because what's the conversion rate? Three percent online? Well, it's it's different. So yeah, three percent would be outrageous. I mean, we're getting under one for a lot of them. That's one out of a hundred. Yeah. So you got to figure one customer out of a hundred people who click on the ad. Then you have to take that and multiply it by the cost per click and say, can I afford this? And most people cannot afford this. How this resale shop is affording this, I do not know. Because they're losing money on that pay-per-click ad. I'm almost certain they are. Well, oh, they could have a huge network. Uh, they could have a huge warehouse. I mean, they, you they could be fifth. Like, I already heard of them. <clears throat> they might not be in Illinois. There's a franchise, Plato's Closet. Yeah. There's a franchise. Mm -hmm. So this looks uh, yeah, all over the place. Cover that because so the top, you know, and this is for everything you pull up, this will look different. So uh, you'll have the ad on top. This is the Google local that I was talking about, where Google's trying to serve you what you want when you want oh, or where okay. you want. So these are all people who have optimized their um, Google local or Google My Business profiles. Okay, because when I just searched, we were like 10 down. <laughs> yeah, so, well, 10 down is not bad, yeah. We're not paying anything. That's a free process? This is free. This is your uh, Google My Business profile, which now is all, it's your Google My Business profile, maybe your Google Maps, and your Google Plus page, all feed from the same. <clears throat> but you get monthly analytics tied to this, too. All of the social media that you engage in, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, will give you analytics and you can pull them for weekly, monthly, or quarterly um, time periods. So, you know, there's data out there. <laughs> you just want to be collecting as much data as you can. And then as we go underneath the local, and you can click down here. You said you got the 10th? Yeah, when I just searched uh, resale shops Palatine, I was like 10 now. There you right go. there. Yeah. So, you know, um, if you look up here, see that? Those stars, mm -hmm. they're steering people for reviews to their Google profile. Okay. So if you start to reinforce that, you may see yourself climb up because all these ones above you either have reviews or stars. Looks like they've got, uh, yeah, you guys have a pretty full profile. Pictures, yeah, this is good. But yeah, more Google reviews would be good for you guys. Okay. <clears throat> So as we get underneath again, we talked about Yelp. The reason Yelp is up here for so many different industries, this is the organic. So now, this could be across the nation. This is, you know, the reason why it's getting pushed further down the page is because it's not necessarily geo-relevant. So I'm not looking for a resale shop in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. It just does me no good to have that called up. Um, but Yelp, you know, Schaumburg, they can get geo-specific. Don't know enough about Yelp to know how they do that, but as you get down, those are other resale shops. And they're constantly, just like Google tells you to make your page change for increased conversion, they are constantly changing this for every search term. How many ads they present, how many of these local uh, profiles are listed, it is, it's constant. You should try and pull up a, a sample one in the middle of a presentation, it gets a little dicey. So going back to our presentation, we'll read So again, we talked about how to build for conversion. <clears throat> Costs, everybody wants to know how much websites cost, and uh, it varies wildly. So um, let's, you know, hosting and maintenance, you could do for roughly $50 a month in terms of uh, if you're going to be having monthly updates, if you're going to have a monthly cost for your domain, um, and then hosting. Building, you want to look at, uh, again, how much homework are you going to do on the front end? Uh, what's the site going to be built for? Uh, a 
are you writing the copy? Are you providing the images? Do we need to bring a photography on site? A photographer on site? <clears throat> so I don't have an answer for that. Every website is different. Um, you know, we uh, can build a, a basic five-page brochure style website for roughly fifteen hundred, and then you can go upwards of about seven to ten, depending upon page count and functionality. So it, again. The more you invest on the front end in creating your plan and your strategy, um, you can lower the cost significantly if you know what you're looking for. Are you going to go into more detail about site maps and wireframes? Yeah. So again, I talk a lot about planning. I understand the hurdle of investing the time to plan. I try and break it down as simply as possible. So we're going to take this next one. So competitive analysis. Um, I list a couple tools on here that are uh, digital marketing tools, so Moz, SEMrush, SpyFu. Um, if you're thinking about investing in pay-per-click, you can pull up your competitor's website and they'll tell you the terms that they're bidding on and it will tell you, you know, potentially how much they're spending. Um, <clears throat> but for most of the businesses I deal with, again, small and mid-sized businesses within probably 25 or 50 miles, it's just they know where their competitors are and we're scanning their websites to look, you know, finding out do you want to build a website just like your competitor um, or do you want to go a different route and try a different strategy. So it says what terms are they ranking for? I don't understand that. Uh, like we just, sh uh, resale shops is oh, a term. So uh, Annie's resale was 10th on the local profile. We can. Uh, and so but what's Moz, SEMrush? Those are um, like Moz.com, SEMrush.com. Those are websites that can give you competitive analysis for the digital competitors. They show you rankings. Moz will show you how powerful your website is against somebody else's website you put the address in for. Yeah. And they have all these, you have to really dig to find out how they're rating you. But they'll give you a numeric term. They'll say you're a seven. And you go look at your competitor, they're a nine. So you got to figure out why are they a nine on the seven, and it'll it'll break down why they're a seven, why they're a nine. So do they look at it like do they do some analytics to, to figure that out? Yeah. Or yeah. These these are um, so these are industry and thought leaders in the digital marketing sector. So what they do is every year or whenever Google rolls out a update to the algorithm or an update to their operating system, they will see <coughs> they'll have. <coughs> I don't want to link it to stocks because it's not financial, but like the Dow Jones, right? They'll have a, a list of 30 websites, they'll monitor their ranking, and then they'll monitor the ranking after the roll-up. And they'll say, okay, here are the 100 or 200 ranking factors. This is where we think, this is why the 75th became the first, and this is why the 25th became the 75th. And they'll reverse engineer, because Google doesn't share their album, they don't share their updates, right? So these guys reverse engineer, and then share it with the industry. So um, I don't, I can't draw a parallel from an industry. Okay. Any like somebody that would do that for a brick and mortar business, like a standard pours or something. Well, you probably just go to a market research company. Market pay research, yeah. Five thousand dollars. Yeah. Let me talk for a minute, if I may, about this competitive analysis because my business, the big search term that you can focus on is start a business. It's too expensive. You cannot afford to bet on it. So the next thing you got to do is you got to say, what subset of that? Well, I decided about five years ago, six years ago, that I wanted my company to rank for one phrase, start a business after 50. And now we're number one. Now, how did I get there? I put that phrase in blogs. I put that phrase in articles. I put that phrase in several places on our website. And I did it year after year. It took me like three years to do this. So but now, did you look at the search traffic for that term? It's not great. Okay, right. But here's where it's important. Let's say you're in a networking meeting. You're face-to-face -face with somebody. And they say, what do you do for a living? I help people over fist. Oh, I'd love to know more about that. Well, if they don't remember your name and your company, when they get home, they'll put start a business at 50. They didn't actually, they wouldn't have gone out on their own. If you hadn't talked to them, right. but when they did, they found you. Well, you're, you're, this is much like what I did with digital marketing strategy in Arlington Heights. You can create a term that doesn't have high search volume, and you can manufacture that search volume, which is what you're doing there. When I'm talking to people, I say digital marketing strategy in Arlington Heights. 
And what was start of business over 50? Start of business, right, after, a, a start of business after 50. Just to show you what he's talking about. So you meet somebody. What did he say start of business after 50? What is this guy? <laughs> so again, we've got the paper click, one, two, three. Click so on that. Starting a business after this one? Yep. This is your article? This article has had 18,878 people read it. Oh my goodness. That's fantastic. This started as you, right? See, I didn't write this article. This is somebody interviewed me for the article. Yeah. And that happened because I put out press stories. I kept putting out press stories all over the place. Are you interested in talking about boomers over 50? So this is a way to inexpensively, relatively inexpensively, get yourself high in the search listings without having to buy ads. Mm -hmm. oh, so relatively inexpensively can be a dangerous term, right? It's a matter of time investment. Yeah, yeah. time investment. Yeah. So this is online 40. PR is yeah. what you're talking about. Probably invested about. 40 hours, but no dollars right. to do this. See, it's a balance between dollars and time. That's what it always is right. in business. But when you start off, you don't have enough dollars, but you have time. I wish I would have known about you four years ago when I started my business. <laughs> People say that all the time. <laughs> so, and here's a, a site map as we transition. Just um, so this side uh, would be a very advanced layout of it. I usually do it in a bullet list, very simple. And then this, you know, as we talked about that project strategy map at the beginning of all JRS modified engagements, this grows. So. Our story, bam, when you put the content right there. And it just, it's just a Word document. So you just add content to it. Then we paste images, or copy and paste images into the content next to it. And that document is then what I hand the developer. So now they have the page count, right? Your home page, your about page. They don't match up, but product, services, contact us, drop downs from each. And once you have the content and the images, a template or a site that you want it to look like, you hand that over to the developer and it gets uh, coded appropriately and then you work through minor edits and such. <clears throat> so again, keep it simple, right? Now is this one of the first things you're doing for the client? Or is this after you do the overall plan and their competitive environment? Does this come so forward? My engagements are web, social, and search. So um, I'm getting a lot of this through exposition and initial meetings. And if we're not uh, working on the website, then it's a social map where we're looking at uh, the social media that we're going to engage in the client personas and the editorial calendar. And then SEO is comprised of all of those. But yeah, I don't work with them on the business plan. I, you know, I can get the gist of it through a couple of meetings if they don't have it documented. Okay. And here's a wireframe. A wireframe is just a simple sketch. Um, you know, oh, this is the login page. I want that down here. Oh, this is the heading page. I want that vertically over here. You just drag and drop and sketch. A lot of times, this is, you know, we have a design questionnaire that we provide. It's give us the three sites that you like the most and tell us what you like about them. And then we just draw the sketch from that document. And it's intentionally scribbly, so you guys don't get This is not uh, about voluminous, I guess. <clears throat> so content, we talked, you know, I think it's a, a little bit of an unrealistic expectation that somebody's going to come to your site and read paragraphs of information, right? So that's why video is, is overtaking text as a, a big influencer in site. And then uh, images, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. So. I really think outlines, for the most part, can get your message conveyed and entice a conversion, whether phone call, contact form, etc. Now, are you? Do you outsource the uh, copywriting, or are you doing it? You doing it yourself? So, copy was what uh, one of the values I brought to the table. So, I was doing a lot of the writing, but now. There's web writers, there's article writers, there's technical writers, depending upon the project. I have them either way. Very good. <clears throat> so again, even 
selecting your domain name, whether it's alliedareheat.com or abc.com, whatever the name of your business is going to be, that can be strategic as well. So since you are the one that doesn't have a website, you can think about sustainability and what you're trying to convey, how easily that gets transferred or relayed in communication. I'll tell you, jrsmarcom.com is not the most easiest off the tongue because of the double dot, the com and dot com. Uh, when you're saying that over the phone, it's arduous, and I would go back and change that. So, um, but that was what I came up with as the name of the business. So, or you can change it to <clears throat> dot net. No, the suffix isn't necessarily what bothers me. I don't, I don't really put so, it would have been JRS something else. Yeah, home. maybe just JRS Marketing. I don't know. But the Marcom is, is a, I thought it was a little bit more recognized, but it's short for marketing communications. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, yeah, yeah, a lot of people are familiar. Let me ask a question about suffixes. So some of you may have encountered this. There is something called domain parking. This is where people register the domain with no intent of ever putting it on a website. They want you to buy it from them. Yeah. Okay? So let me ask you, Joe. Let's say you are absolutely determined to have this name for your site. And you go in and somebody's parked the dot com. Mm -hmm. Should you try to go dot net? Or should you go up with a completely different domain? So again, back to the strategy of the business. <clears throat> um, how are you going to get people to the site? Does dot net or dot com matter? If you're going to be sharing on social and just driving click traffic, half of the links that you share are going to be shortened and not have the actual name anyways. So it doesn't matter. So unless you're going to have somebody sitting there and actually typing it in off your business card. There was a, I was working with a restaurant and uh, they had, it was a possessive, so it was the name apostrophe s restaurant.com and uh, somebody had the one with the s. <laughs> so they did a singular and it was, I was working with them after they selected their domain name, but we looked into getting the other and it was like $2,000. Just, just the domain name. And so what we did was we went back and we looked at the analytics and saw how many people were typing in their name. And a lot of people were typing in their name, so their site was coming up anyway, so the S didn't really impact it. So, you know, you can use the added exterior decision making. It doesn't have to be as strong as feel this way. Or, like, let's see what the numbers are. There's a few domain names I looked at that people wanted half a million dollars for. I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, and then they so, kept contacting me. We'd like to negotiate this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so. They got a live one on the hook here. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Right, right. Well, and that could, be, that's, could very well be someone in a third world country yeah. sitting in a hut, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. they, it's, I guarantee you nobody has assigned an actual value of $500,000 to a domain, right? Sounds like, yeah, I don't think so. So this is, I, I don't expect you guys to read this, this was um, what I was talking about, some of the different changes that sites have made, again, testing conversion rates and percentages. So, um, you know, at best, my site gets about 300 visits a month. So am I going to sink a ton of time into changing where the phone number is, and, you know, increasing where the blogs are viewable? And probably not going to see a return on that. If you're Amazon and you're making millions of dollars an hour for you know whatever, whatever I know, but and you change the button and that increases your close rate three percent, that's going to be something you're going to sink some time into finding out. So some of these, you know, I don't anticipate us putting into action, but just to give you an idea, what some so uh, implementing a chat now button increased free sign up form fills by 31 percent. Cars.com boosted their conversion rate by adding a security seal to their site, um, including this discount information in the title, you know, 15% off a product. Um, benefits, social proof, and credibility. That's pretty much topical trust authority, um, which is what we talked about earlier. Led to 144.1% improvement on landing pages. So it's putting people on your homepage, so again, changing the image. Including a pain point, increased conversions by 31%, changing call to action button from green to red. 
<laughs> it's uh, been shown to increase conversions by as much as 34%. <clears throat> Moving around your buy now button, uh, changing from C plans and pricing to get started today, increased conversions by 252% from the <laughs> site type to it. Um, so we talked about keeping the contact form short. Does everybody know what a CAPTCHA is? Mm -hmm. CAP. So that's when uh, it says enter this number, enter this word is a CAPTCHA form. So turning that off led to no conversions lost and very little spam. So I'd be interested to know what their traffic value was, just from an offshoot. Uh, showing testimonials, drive validation. <clears throat> Natural language and forms increases conversion by 25 to 40%. Uh, mobile responsive site doubles conversions. And then segmenting your users, which, uh, again, if, if it's these people bought pants, these people bought shirts, these people bought appliances, you know, determining what the close rates are for those separate products could potentially be something that could indicate a path for you. So testing and experimenting, again, being surprised at what that can do with a minor. I talked about this, you know, just launching your site doesn't mean people are going to flood to it. You have to be thinking whether it's online PR or whether it's social engagement. Um, many of the small businesses I work with uh, are starting from scratch their social social uh, presence so if we share something general rule of thumb is 10% of the traffic to your or 10% of your audience gets served your content on social so if I have 10 people that like my page that means one person sees that so it's very difficult to gain any traction with your uh, communications looking at that so we do promotions of the content that we share for them and what that means is I can target um, demographic um, options. It's basically a click-down menu. So an example was uh, we were selling weather guard truck boxes for a client. And uh, we targeted everybody with a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, or Nissan truck, um, electricians, contractors, plumbers in a 25-mile radius. So not only are the people seeing that ad have those affinities, but now they can like the page or like the content. You know, they can definitely buy, but more importantly, they're liking our page so that we get the audience up. Now the next time we share, there's 20 instead of 10 and two people see it. So it, really, it is a slog to get started, but having that audience pays dividends down the road. Uh, were these Facebook ads? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can do Facebook, Twitter. You can't drill down that specifically on Google. The, the truck owners and the job titles, no. you can do that on Facebook. But you can, I mean, you can get keyword recommendations for uh, truck boxes. So yeah, it, that would be more of a demand side thing where they're pulling that data from Google and Facebook's more of a push where we're pushing the information in front of people we want to see. Okay. <clears throat> All right, those are the websites and that is the presentation. And you did say that you were going to email us those, those yeah. slides? Cool. Yeah, you have the sign-up sheet, right? Everybody put their email. So we've got a couple minutes. I'd be more than happy to ask questions.